Soil salinity. Soil salinity limits plant growth due to the presence of soluble salts in the soil, which hold water more tightly than plants can extract it. As a result, many plants will show drought symptoms, but the soil is often relatively moist. Salinity may occur naturally or be caused by human activities. Naturally occurring salinity results from long-term, continuous discharge of saline groundwater. Human-induced salinity is the result of human activities that have changed local water flow patterns in an area. Soils that were not previously saline have become saline due to changes in the discharge of saline groundwater. Soil salinity is a term meaning excessive accumulation of mineral salts in the soil. Soil salinity is a problem that most often occurs in gardens located in large urban agglomerations. If it occurs for a long time, it may lead to the death of plants due to difficulties in absorbing nutrients from the ground. This process, over a longer period of time, leads to the death of plants due to disruption of their water management. Soil salinity, what is it and how does it arise? Soil salinity is the excessive accumulation of sodium, potassium, magnesium, chlorine, sulfates, carbonates, and bicarbonates. A measure of soil salinity is the amount of salt content in soil water. It is expressed in grams per liter of water. Soil salinity may be caused by the natural accumulation of salts in the soil or the result of inappropriate human activities leading to the formation of saline soils. So soil salinization occurs mainly when over-fertilization with mineral fertilizers using too high doses of mineral fertilizers in agricultural areas and in greenhouse crops, before we start using them, we should determine the actual needs of the soil and use only those fertilizers that contain only the necessary nutrients. Also, be careful not to increase the dose of the preparation, watering plants with water with excessive content of cations and anions, Na, Cl, NO2, K, SO4, snow removal using salt, by sprinkling salt on garden alleys or sidewalks, we will destroy grass and plants. We can replace salt with sand in this case. Improper use of plant protection products, avoid excessively frequent use of chemicals to eliminate weeds and pests. You should also not pour leftover unused fertilizer into the soil. Soil salinity impact on plants. The result of soil salinity is the so-called physiological drought. In practice, it is nothing more than the inability to extract nutrients from the soil even though they are available. Individual elements found in the earth are blocked because they create compounds that are unavailable to plants. The first symptom will be their slow death, progressing from the top to the bottom. First, it will affect their leaves, they will start to turn brown and wither. Over time, the problem will also affect the roots, causing them to become weaker and less developed. Soil salinity develops when excess water from well-drained fertilization zones moves and accumulates in imperfect or poorly drained zones. The accumulation of excess water introduces dissolved salts into the root zone. The concentration of these salts reduces the amount of water available, so plants trying to grow in saline areas are unable to take in enough water to grow. Soil salinity can be difficult to notice from season to season because it is affected by humidity. In wet years, sufficient leaching and dissolution of salts occurs so that they are not visible on the soil surface and some plant growth is possible. However, excess water received in wet years contributes to the overall salinity problem over time. In dry years, increased evaporation dries out the soil and draws salts to the soil surface, forming white salt crusts. In dry years, the salts are highly visible and in affected areas there is little or no crop yield. In excessively saline soils, the water management of plants is disturbed. It is difficult for plants to absorb water and minerals from saline soil, even though these ingredients are present in the soil. The resulting oxidative stress, the so-called physiological drought results in leaves turning brown, drying out and falling prematurely. It also leads to a decrease in germination capacity, CO2 assimilation and, as a result, to a decrease in the chlorophyll content in the leaves and inhibition of plant growth. Saline soil primarily leads to impaired water and nutrient uptake, which translates into inhibition of plant growth and development, and thus leads to reduced yields. In extreme cases, 
High salt concentrations can lead to the death of plants, but a lot depends on the tolerance of individual species and varieties. Salinity also leads to the destruction of soil colloids and the washing out of magnesium and calcium, which means an increased risk of erosion and the effects are visible in subsequent seasons. The sensitivity of plants to soil salinity depends on many factors, including the species and even variety of the plant, development phase, and climatic and soil conditions. Young seedlings are most sensitive to soil salinity. Over time, the plant develops defense mechanisms. Plants resistant to soil salinity include sea buckthorn, barberry, sumac, field maple, hawthorn, common privet, Siberian carragana, cotoneaster, tamarisk, fodder and sugar beet, clover and barley. As well as vegetables and fruit plants, beetroots, asparagus, spinach, tomatoes, broccoli, cabbage or apple. Corn and potatoes are moderately sensitive species and in their case symptoms will appear only at higher salt concentrations. Particularly sensitive to salt content in the soil are garden ferns, conifers, azaleas, rhododendrons, as well as many fruit trees, shrubs, and vegetables. Sunflowers, soybeans, corn, peas, beans, potatoes carrots, onions, strawberries, raspberries. Salinity resistance during plant germination in the case of barley, wheat, and rye are large. While corn and beans are very poor. Check for poor growth, light gray or white discoloration on the soil surface, areas that take longer to dry in the growth of salt-tolerant weeds such as barley, cochia, Russian thistle. How to measure soil salinity. Determine whether salinity is a problem by taking soil samples from both affected and unaffected areas. Complex soil sampling may not provide an accurate measurement of the overall salinity level of a field. To assess a suspected area of a field for salinity, collect soil samples within 0.6 meters of the affected area and the adjacent unaffected area. If you want to map an entire field for its salinity status, you can use indirect measurements using specialized equipment. Determine the source of salinity. Dig a hole in the soil in both affected and unaffected areas, check for salt particles and carbonates with dilute hydrochloric acid. Since soluble salts are more mobile than carbonates, this can be used to determine the direction of water movement. Install observation wells and piezometers to identify wet and dry conditions. Soil salinity is determined in laboratories using the conductometric method, i.e. measuring the electrical conductivity of soil paste obtained by mixing soil with distilled water. For gardening purposes, a portable conductivity meter is used for measurements, and the salt concentration in soils and substrates is given in grams of NaCl per 1 dm cubed of soil. High groundwater levels within 1.8 meters of the soil surface can cause soluble salts to enter the root zone of the soil due to the upward movement of water. This phenomenon increases as the soil texture becomes finer. According to research and analyses, the estimated capillary rise of water above ground level in soil is as follows. Very coarse sand 2.0 cm. Coarse sand 4.1 cm. Medium sand 8.1 cm. Fine sand 17.3 cm. Very fine sand 40.6 cm. Mule 101.6 cm. Clay greater than 101.6 cm. Salinity can come in several different forms. The most common type of salinity results from an excess of any type of salt in the soil, limiting the availability of water to plants. This results in high electrical conductivity, a measure of soluble salts in the soil. As the concentration of soluble salts increases, the electricity of the soil extract increases. Another form of salinity occurs if sodium salts are the dominant type of salt. A relatively small amount of sodium salts can negatively affect the structure of the soil and create a sodium state in it, but it does not necessarily have to have high electrical conductivity. These conditions are often referred to as alkaline. The concentration of sodium relative to calcium and magnesium in the soil is called the sodium adsorption coefficient. SAR is a measure of the soicity of soil. 
Water extracts from soil with SAR values greater than 13 indicate that the soil has a sodium problem. Even with SAR values 8, there are cases when relatively high concentrations of sodium in relation to calcium and magnesium cause dispersion of clay particles, i.e. structural collapse of the soil and blocking of soil pores, which reduces the infiltration rate and increases the potential for erosion. Diagnosis of non-saline and saline soils shows that, in non-saline soil legumes and vegetables with SAR less than 13 showed less growth with an increase in EC, like, an increase in the content of soluble salts in the soil. With sodium phenomenon all plants at high EC there was little or no plant growth, the pH in this case may be greater than 8.6. A mixture of both variants may also occur. The above values should be treated as a guide when determining the presence and intensity of salinity in the soil. When EC or SAR values approach these critical values, crop performance may be affected. The effects of soil salinity are influenced to some extent by soil texture, organic matter content, soil moisture, etc. How to prevent soil salinization? One way to combat soil salinity is to water very abundantly. If there is a lot of water, harmful compounds will be washed from its surface into the ground where they will not be available to plant roots. However, it is not easy to do, because huge amounts of water are needed even 100 to 250 dm cubed per 1 square meter therefore, this method is most often used in professional greenhouses. To prevent excessive soil salinization, first of all, mineral fertilization should be used rationally, avoid the use of salt in winter maintenance of roads and paths, and use organic fertilizers to improve the soil structure. Recommended organic fertilizers include compost, manure, as well as biohumus. How to reduce soil salinity in the garden? Soil salinity can be reduced by starting with liming the soil using calcium and magnesium fertilizers. You can use, for example, granulated chalk lime with magnesium or dolomite. Soil salinity can also be reduced by mixing soil with gypsum in a ratio of several tons of gypsum per hectare thanks to this, the salt compounds will not completely disappear from the soil but will become non-toxic and digestible for plants. If the salinity problem is not yet serious, even mixing the soil with calcium fertilizer is enough. In the case of saline soils at shallow depths, deep plowing is sufficient. Reclamation of more heavily degraded soil begins with planting plants resistant to salinity until the soil permeability is gradually improved. In particularly severe cases, Dilute sulfuric acid is used to dissolve the calcium carbonate contained in the soil. In practice, this increases the permeability and aggregation of the soil, and the sodium sulfate formed in the soil solution is washed out. In agriculture, cultivation methods are modified on saline soils. For example, in irrigated fields, plants previously grown at the tops of furrows are planted halfway up. This allows the roots to use water, while salt accumulation is strongest in the upper part of the ridge, away from the root system. In soils with lower permeability, salinity can be reduced by adding organic matter low in available forms of minerals. Such an addition may be garden peat, uncomposted garden bark, sawdust from coniferous trees, beech bark compost, straw, or mixtures of various lignite fractions. Depending on the degree of soil salinity, Approximately 10 to 50% of organic matter should be used per 20 cm layer of soil. Prevention is definitely better than trying to reverse changes that have already occurred. We can reduce the risk of salinization of our soils by rationally using mineral fertilizers, which in the current season. Moreover, it is worth using organic fertilizers, as well as calcium and magnesium fertilizers, which not only provide nutrients, but also have a beneficial effect on the soil structure. Keep annual records of crop yields and rainfall during the growing season. Using GPS technology, create reference points for repeat soil testing to monitor changes in soil salinity. If inspection wells or piezometers are installed, groundwater levels should be monitored throughout the growing season to determine whether water levels are declining. If salinity levels do not decrease, other management strategies may need to be considered. Definitely an innovative method to improve soil quality, 
but it is becoming more and more common. Use plant microorganisms, this is a promising solution. In light of these challenges, the use of certain microorganisms inhabiting the plant rhizosphere or inhabiting the roots of halophytic plants, which also have plant growth-promoting properties. As a promising strategy to increase the adaptive capacity of plants to salinity-induced stress conditions. These beneficial plant microbes play a key role in relieving salt stress by producing osmoprotectants, antioxidants, ACC deaminase enzymes, hormones, exopolysaccharides, organic acids, nitric oxide, siderophores. At the same time, they can promote increased nutrient availability. Subsequent inoculation of crop plants with such salt-tolerant plant growth-promoting bacteria has been shown to increase plant growth and yields in saline soils. Offering benefits such as improved soil fertility, increased nutrient availability, protection against soilborne pathogens, increased tolerance to biotic and abiotic stresses, and reduced environmental pollution compared to chemical fertilizers, biofertilizers are a sustainable approach to soil improvement. Of particular note is penicillium, a soil fungus known for its beneficial effects on soil health, particularly in mitigating soil salinity in agriculture. Penicillium can thrive in high salinity conditions, making it a suitable candidate for solving salinity problems. This fungus has the ability to reduce the uptake of salts, including sodium and chlorine, by plant roots, thereby mitigating the harmful effects of salinity on plant growth. Soil salinity often leads to an imbalance and reduced availability of essential nutrients for plant growth. Penicillium can dissolve and mobilize nutrients in the soil, making them more available to plants and alleviating nutrient deficiencies caused by salinity stress. By mitigating the adverse effects of soil salinity, penicillium promotes better plant growth and development, enhancing overall physiological processes in plants and leading to increased yields, increased stress tolerance and more efficient use of resources. The interaction between plant beneficial microorganisms and host plants produces many benefits, including increased stress tolerance, root modifications, improved soil quality traits, increased nutrient uptake, and pathogen suppression. It should be noted that the effectiveness of penicillium in controlling soil salinity may vary depending on specific soil and environmental conditions. It is therefore recommended to consult agricultural experts or local extension services for guidance on its use and suitability in a specific farming system. Sustainable solutions such as agricultural microorganisms in integrated soil fertility management. Natural plant protection and biofertilizers are a powerful tool for natural and sustainable agriculture, ensuring high-quality crops and the health of various forms of life.